a long cold winter's night. Yeah. And not, uh, not, not stopping the conversation with Jack until he's a, a dead soldier. Yeah. But that's not very good for you either, is it? No. Some are comforted by the misery of others. Yeah. Some people are comforted by the misery around them. And, and when they feel that life is picked on them, then they draw comfort from the fact that someone else is suffering. That's right. That. There are people who are comforted by, by talking about other people's misfortunes or pulling other people down. And we talk about crab in the barrel syndrome. Yeah. We wonder why when you cook a pot of crabs, none ever escape. Mm -hmm. And then you see all the claws at the bottom of the pot, and it explains it. Mm -hmm. They were scrambling in there. They were jerking and pulling at one another. And so we have a situation where, where we are comforted and, you know, by things that are not good for us Amen. and left to our own devices. Yeah. We would destroy ourselves. Yeah. That's why Jesus came. Amen. To save us from what comforts us. Mm. Now that yeah. might sound odd to hear. Mm. No. But mm. sin is mighty comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Why does sin comfort us? Sin comforts us because it appeals to our human fallenness. Our carnality. Our flesh. Everything we mentioned. When I said name some foods that comfort. Everything we mentioned is something that what? Tastes so good. Rolling past those taste buds. You know. You kind of hold it on the back of the tongue and let them have some. Before <laughs> See, the front taste buds, they have all the fun. And by the time you swallow it, it just whoop, goes right over the back one. So sometimes you got to slow it down, slow down the roll and just let it <laughs> slide over the back bud so they can have some fun. Too. Amen. But everything we mention tastes good. Amen. And there was a mantra back in the 60s, and some of you old enough to have heard this and, and maybe even have said it. You know, if it feels good, do it. Anyone here old enough to remember hearing that said? Yes. Or maybe saw it in a museum? You know. <laughs> I can admit I'm old enough to have heard that. If it feels good, do it. That was the mantra of the 60s and the sexual revolution and the pill and all of that and, and uh, the flower children and, and the, the drug culture when it really hit big in the 60s. And this, this euphoria, this craziness and this euphoria sweeping the nation as if there's never a day of reckoning. Mm. But there's always a day of reckoning. Yeah. And when you have been engaging in excess, there comes a time when accounts must be settled. Yeah. And God calls us from what's comforting to what will comfort. Mm -hmm. See, it's not like God is calling you from what comforts you to harshness. That's not what he does. Amen. God is calling you from what comforts you to what ought to comfort you. To what will comfort you best. Now, God always has in mind what's best. And I'm telling you, as, as, a, as a veteran of some large storms, I've been in some hurricanes before. Yeah. Not, not just thunderstorms, but I've been in some actual bona fide typhoons. Yeah. And as a veteran of those typhoons, I'm here to tell you that when you're in the typhoon, when you're in the hurricane, yeah. and, and, you know, and, and that eye wall is approaching, it is mighty hard to remember that this is for my good yeah. and, and that God is going to bring blessing on the back side of this. Yeah. But the simple truth is that your best growth toward God occurs oh, in those storms. Oh, because it's only in the storms of life yeah. 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 that we are reminded that we are but creatures. Uh, yeah. Preacher, yeah. Pastor, preacher. It's only in the storms yeah. of life that we discover that we're not quite as strong as we thought oh, we were. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's only in the storm of life yeah. that we begin to discover that, that we are not really that high 
muckety muck that oh, we Lord, thought we Lord. were. Lord. And the situation becomes so dire and so so yes. desperate in the storm yes. that we realize that if I don't get help from somewhere, hey, hey, hey. I'm going to go under. Hallelujah. Mm? Yes. And that's when we begin to turn to God. Yes. Because yes. when we look around at others for help, yes. we are either stiff-armed like a running back on his way to the goal line, my, my, my. or we discover that the person we turn to is in more need of help yes. than ourselves. Yes. Yes. And our eyes stop looking down and oh, out and they look up. Yeah. We call on the God who has made us. Yes. And like Peter said so yes. long ago, yes. we say, Lord, if you don't save me, yes. I'll perish. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. That's when growth occurs. Yes. Yes. That's when we take stock. And that's when we realize yes. that it was my comfort yes. my Lord. that got me in this storm. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Reach it, Pastor. Preach it. My wife and I don't ordinarily watch much television uh, of the national sort, like NBC and ABC or whatever. Amen. We watch educational television when we watch. But for some reason, we just took in what happened to be the last episode of The Biggest Loser last week. And uh, the man who won started out around 430. And I don't know for sure, but... He looked like he had been comforting himself a lot, you know, and uh, because he was literally, you know, dripping fat, and he lost, I believe, about 240-some pounds, and when he finished, he weighed around 191. So someone bigger and heavier than he was stepped out of himself so to speak. Yeah. There were two of them in there. Yeah. And the other guy was bigger than he was. So the point is that a lot of self-denial, a whole lot of reckoning yeah. had to occur. Yeah. And guess what? He will, if he's wise, stay small, although that's a difficult thing to do, and he will live a much longer life than if he had not gone through those things yeah. that it took to go from 430 mm -hmm. down to 191. My what did he do, Pastor? Well, he postponed his day of reckoning. Yeah. And there are some placements of plaque in his arteries mm -hmm. that he put there while he was comforting himself. Yeah. 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 And there are some situations in his body, in his liver, in his organs, that he deposited there. Yeah. And there will be some reckoning. Yes. But he delayed it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He might have a heart attack and died next year, mm -hmm. or even this year, had he not done what he did. Mm -hmm. and, and guess what? He's much more comforted now yeah. by going to the gym yeah. and breaking a sweat and then looking at his new self, that comforts him much more than a whole sweet potato pie used to. Yeah. 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 And, and so what Pastor's trying to do is uh, lay the foundation yeah. in the natural before yeah. we move to the spiritual oh, realm hallelujah. so that you can see what we're trying to say. Yeah. That, that he, he called himself My Lord. Uh, yeah. from comfort to comfort. Yes. And from a comfort that was killing him yeah. to a comfort that he can live with. Yeah. Well, I wish somebody was Preach hearing that. Yeah. 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 And, and that's what God did with Mary. Mm -hmm. And as we turn the corner toward the end of the message, we want to show you that that's what God is doing with each of us. Yeah. Each you. and every day. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. In oh, many different thank kinds you. of ways. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Let's look at the text and, and see if we can pull this out in the spiritual now. We, we've laid the table in the natural. Let's put some spiritual food on it. Yes, sir. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> this virgin, this young girl, yes. uh, barely in her teens. That's right. uh, when a young girl is, is 14 or 15, she dreams special dreams. Yes. Yeah. She, she is so young and innocent that 
she really has no idea of, of what really lies ahead. Yes. And, and, and she spends long hours dreaming of what it will be to become a mother and to have a husband and, and have a family and, and, and do all those wonderful grown up things. And this is where Mary was. Perfect. She was already betrothed to Joseph. A much older man, yes. But, uh, but Mary may have been grateful to get Joseph because Mary wasn't a particularly pretty girl. And men do tend to... Some of you said, wait now, wait, back up a bit. What, what, do you, what do you mean? I've seen the Virgin Mary's painting and statues and